Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look today at the Buffalo Sabres. Guys, they have been atrocious this season and it continues. Again, they didn't even have the good start this year. Usually they have a good start this season and fall off. That didn't even happen this year. We're going to be taking a look at the Buffalo Sabres in this video. If you guys like what we're doing here at Gold Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL, you guys know what to do. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and even bigger subscribe down below. And let's take a look at the Buffalo Sabres. So, the Buffalo Sabres. Title of this video, what are the Sabres doing? Now, a lot of things that the Sabres can do. And Kevin Adams, the general manager... I don't envy him one bit. Maybe the salary at the end of the year. Maybe I envy that just a little bit. But besides that, Kevin Adams has a very difficult job in Buffalo. You look at some of the guys that are supposedly on the trade block. Linus Allmark, final year of his $2.6 million contract. Who's going to take him? Right shot defenseman, Rasmus Ristolainen. Another two years left on his deal, over $5 million. Jeff Skinner. <laughs> nine million per season for the next seven years or forever whichever one you want to call and jack eichel 10 million dollars per season for the next five years as well as taylor hall who i did not leave on this list but he should be in the conversation as well so we're going to start off with linus allmark linus allmark final year of his contract he's i believe 26 or 27 years old so he's still fairly young as a goaltender just getting into his prime I do not believe he will be the starting... Yeah, I don't think he will be in a Buffalo Sabres jersey to the start of next season. Whether he gets traded at the trade deadline this year or he signs in free agency elsewhere, Linus Allmark will not be with the Buffalo Sabres. I think for the Buffalo Sabres' sake, at this point, you're better off trading at the trade deadline to pick up some more assets. This team is not going to win with Linus Allmark this year, and it doesn't seem like things are going to work out in the future with Allmark. You don't want to see another Robin Leonard situation where you let him walk away for free, and then he wins. He's a Vesna candidate the following season. I don't think they're going to want to see that with Allmark. He's a very good goaltender. I got to admit, he makes some really good saves and keeps the Sabres in games, but... I don't see how Allmark is going to even want to stay in Buffalo. Now we're moving on to right shot defenseman Rasmus Ristolainen. Now we have not seen Rasmus Ristolainen for a while now since the whole COVID situation in Buffalo. He's making $5.4 million per season. He has this year and next year on his contract. So next offseason, he will be a pending unrestricted free agent. He is not playing right now, which makes things a little bit more interesting. And there are some questions about whether it's COVID fatigue, which he's been saying, or there's underlying issues with Buffalo. Now, the Buffalo Sabres should not trade Rasmus Riss to line in unless he will not play with this team again, which could be happening here. He's kind of playing his cards like, listen, I'm not playing for the Sabres again. I'm not going back to Buffalo after COVID. Trade me and we'll figure it out. Or... The Buffalo Sabres really feel that he's fatigued and he can come back next season and then they don't have to worry about it. But Risto Linen is their best defenseman right now. I mean, let's be completely honest. So do you want to trade your best defenseman away? Is that something that really makes sense for the Sabres right now? No. No, it really doesn't. So then becomes the question, what do you do at that rate? So that's something that they have to figure out because if Ristolainen really will never play again for the Sabres, then you've got to trade him. And while his value is at least something, um, and maybe the trade deadline is the best time to do that, you're going to get more value for him this year than next year. And at this point, the Sabres aren't making the playoffs this year, so why waste possible assets you could acquire out of Ristolainen if you're going to lose him in a year from now anyway? Another guy to look at is Jeff Skinner. This guy is not getting traded unless a team is willing to give up the, f I mean, really the Sabres have to give up the farm just to get rid of Jeff Skinner's contract. And even then teams don't want that $9 million cap it for the next decade. So Jeff Skinner is going to get bought out, whether it's this year or next year, Buffalo is going to have to bite the bullet as, you know, as soon as they are done with buying out Cody Hodgson, now they're going to have to buy out Jeff Skinner for the next two decades. That's what we're going to see here. I'm betting right now there is no way Jeff Skinner will stay in Buffalo next year. And then we've got Taylor Hall. Final year of his $9 million contract he signed last year with the Buffalo Sabres. He will not be extending 
with the Sabres. Now, I don't see a situation where he's going to get a ton of interest on the trade market here at the trade deadline. Maybe if he puts things together at the end of the season, because it means nothing at that point, maybe he just wants to put up points. He has one goal in 19 games. I don't see many takers for him at his $9 million. And the value that's probably still at this point going to cost Taylor Hall because of the name, former first overall pick, it's still going to cost you a pretty penny. And I don't think teams are even willing to do that for Taylor Hall. And then the big name we already talked about an entire video, a mock trades video for Jack Eichel, the captain, the face of the franchise here for the Buffalo Sabres. At this point, I'm even since we've seen that mock trades video, I've watched the Buffalo Sabres and Eichel's not even playing right now. He has 14 points in 19 games, two goals. So even Jack Eichel, it's like, even if, you know, you know who Jack Eichel is, it's like, all right, so he's produced two goals this season. He's been out with injuries and there's been a, a concern about lack of uh, drive when the team isn't doing well. And you could relate that back to Jack Eichel. And is it is it even worth taking his $10 million and trading four first-round picks, a top prospect, for a guy that has not even proven much in Buffalo to be the guy? So does that diminish even Jack Eichel's value at this point? Now, I made that video, and a lot of you said, all oh, these trades, they would never go through. The Sabres would never accept. But I am just talking about value at the moment. He's got 14 points in 19 games, which isn't terrible, but he's got two. He has two goals. That's not going to cut it. How many teams out in the league are going to pay $10 million for the next half decade to a guy that is putting up two goals in the first half of the season, been the leader of this team for how long, and this team has not made the postseason? So who is poning up this money to a guy that hasn't even really proven much in the NHL? And I love Jack Eichel. I think he's a great player. And obviously, he's not Connor McDavid, which the Sabres were hoping to get back when they were tanking a couple years back. But they were still in the same situation. And then comes the issue. If you trade all these guys away, then you're doing what you did a couple of years back. You're just putting yourself back in that spot. And you're still with the crappy Kyle Oposo contracts and the Jeff Skinner contracts. And you don't have a starting goaltender if you trade Linus Allmark. Like... It seems like the the situation never ends in Buffalo. It see it seems like as soon as the young guys, you know, they're full of young guys. Everybody wants to see Yesu Lokinen or whatever his name is, Kokinen. No, do not play another young goaltender because we've seen. The, I've said this for a long time since I started the channel. There is something in the water in Buffalo, and it seems like every general manager that comes in, every passing head coach that comes in, every superstar that comes in, they all fall apart. And what is the main issue there? And a lot of Buffalo Sabres fans will say the top guys, the owners, the ownership. Now, I'm not going to knock the Pagulas because they funded an arena for Penn State, Pagula Ice Arena. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna bash on them too much. But at the end of the day, it seems like that's the only constant. When things are not working for you and you've got to change something and you've changed everything, you've changed star players, you've changed head coaches, general managers. Maybe it's time for the for the ownership, the Pagulas, to maybe take a look at what they how they've been treating the fans over the past couple of decades, how things have been going on, being chintzing out on the money side, you know, letting go of a ton of employees during the COVID situation. It doesn't bode well in PR, and it doesn't bode well for a fan base that, quite honestly, has had nothing to cheer for. That's why the Buffalo Bills fan base, for on all honest sakes, is so big. It's because they're not cheering on the Sabres because they've sucked. So, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do the Buffalo Sabres have to do to fix their problems? Like I said, they've done everything in the book except change the ownership. So is that a potential situation? Do we see that? Because now when you talk about owners, now you're talking about the possibility of them leaving Buffalo. Is that on the table? So guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you guys like what we're doing here at Cold Line Hockey, want to see the latest news around the NHL, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And even bigger, subscribe down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.